and be based all around loon calls or like how, what was the evolution of the process for you? How did you, where did you start and like where, what happened that kind of surprised you about where yeah. you ended up? Um, I began essentially, it was inspired. I was doing a new music up on new music on the point, the festival that's up in Vermont. Um, this was back in 2014. Uh, and the loons would, there was an Island right off the, uh, in the middle of the lake that the point counterpoint is on. Um, and I think it's like a preserve for loons and the males would be, uh, making these loon calls all night. And it was like really hard to sleep through them. And they were like impressively loud, even though they were, you know, half mile away or something, uh, yeah. you would hear them all night. Um, and so, you know, it made a big effect on me. And I was like, oh, I got to record those and, and make a piece with it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until a, a few months later that I got around to, you know, like breaking out the field recording. And uh, I had made the field recording. I had just, I was worried that I wasn't going to pick up the loon calls. Mm -hmm. So I had put my like, mic on really hot. Mm -hmm. And um, as a result, there's just like a lot of noise in the recording. Mm -hmm. And instead of like trying to scrub it, I just decided like that was like kind of a serendipitous moment in which I decided that like that noise would be like the bed of the piece. Mm -hmm. And then like a lot of the sound would just be that kind of like undercurrent of, of noise that you hear fade in right at the beginning. And it's just kind of like, especially in the live performance, uh, it's there the whole time. And then when it finally recedes at the end, you're like, wow, there was a lot more there than I, I thought. And um, that was kind of the beginning of, of this idea that it wasn't going to be the kind of piece where it was, you know, a lot of exciting, like formal developments. It was going to kind of live in this world and, and just try to, um, yeah, absorb this beautiful moment for 10 or 11 minutes. So. Mm -hmm. And was the length, was the length of the recording? I mean, you said you left the recorder on all night. Did you just kind of extract and piece together um, the interesting? Yeah, there was long stretches of silence. Yeah. Um, so I mostly kind of, cut to the loon calls uh, throughout like a six hour period, which ended up being, and I wanted them to be pretty regular after a certain point. So after about 90 seconds, they start you know, layering on top of each other, but it's mostly, um, there's not that much editing except for to take out space in between. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, you know, what are the challenges of um, performing a piece like this where, you know, the, the track is, how it is and you have to kind of conform to that and uh does the click track help or is it is it uh what are the challenges of, of learning a piece like this yeah um well i was good yeah i wanted to talk to you about that too um i so i mean especially right now i really like having the opportunity to play <laughs> with something um, because obviously this past year I've just been, you know, by myself so much of the time. And so it's nice to be able to put, put, um, sound against other sound. And especially I, I really like that it, um, like you were just talking about, you know, it's a, it's a rough recording of, of the natural world. And I find the natural world really inspiring anyway. So it's just been, it's been cool to mix my sound with that. Um, it's interesting because coupled with that, you know, the, the, the track is, is the natural world uh, along with your electronics, obviously, but it's based on this very organic sound. Um, but then on top of that, you have the click track, which um, to be a hundred percent candid, I don't like playing with, with metronomes, with clicks. Um, However, in a piece like this, I, so I have tried it um, without the click track mm -hmm. and just having like the measures pop in every now and then to like give me a reference. And I wanted to ask you, so, you know, I was in the ballpark when the measures would come in and tell me where I, where I was supposed to be, but um, it was not precise because I would alter the tempo just slightly and um, I wanted to ask you how important it is to you that it be perfectly lined up. Um, I was imagining that there are probably some moments that are really important to you that it really align and, and maybe others where it's. Yeah. To answer your question, I could definitely see it working. Um, 
without the click track. There is a portion of the piece, especially, I think it's about seven or eight minutes in, mm -hmm. where um, the loon calls start. I processed it in a way to create like almost a um, corral out of the loon calls yeah. um, that build up. And uh, the violin part does play, you know, uh, an important part in terms of how the pitches line up. And right. um, it's more important in the second half that, you know, you're essentially right on the track. But at the same time, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I actually haven't heard someone try to, to play it um, without um, the click track. So I'd be interested to hear the result. And if, if you're interested in uh, exploring that option for, oh, for the sure. written vibes. Why so. is it spelled? Why is the title spelled L-U-N-E rather than L-O-O-N? I think I have a idea, but I want to ask yeah. you. Yeah, it was recorded at night um, under a big full moon. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just liked the double entendre of the French word for moon, loon, yeah. um, with, you know, loon, the bird. I didn't want it to be too on the nose that this was a bird piece. You know, there's all these mess messianic overtones. And um, I, I don't know, you know, I was like, I think my second, third year of grad school. And I think I was just a little overwrought with my postmodern wordplay and yeah. you know things like that. I was getting a little uh, ahead of myself, but I, I like the. Um, I wanted to incorporate somehow to this kind of like nocturnal aspect yeah. to the music, um, really? and the piece is also uh, very much informed by uh, the death of a close friend of mine who who passed away while I was writing it, and so like this kind of night imagery and the poetic resonance between, you know, night and death uh, are very important in the piece and in the new music video with Lilith Artunian. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I definitely wanted that to be somehow represented right up front uh, in the title. I did too. I just, I, w I, I really want to like make the video have some kind of atmosphere or something because the piece is Fantastic. so atmospheric. Yeah, when I did the premiere originally, we did like, really heavy blue mood lighting i was that's so funny because this morning i like had a video and i was in final cut and i was like playing with the colors and i put it to blue and i was like oh that looks kind of fitting so maybe nice. I'll well, yeah that sounds awesome i have lavender walls so it's already like kind of but it's just it's hard to get a good framing like in a bedroom you know so, yeah, of course. Well, but, I would just say, you know, maybe a guiding principle can be this kind of like water imagery and nature and, and kind of like a nocturnal like scene with the moon, you know, anything that inspires yeah. you there. So I think blue would work really well. Like I kind of think of like a David Lynch and like, you know, like Twin Peaks night shot where it's kind of like they've got clearly got lighting that they're projecting onto it, but it's this kind of like moody atmosphere. Yeah, I'll try it. I'll see if I can make it look cool. Fantastic. Cool, Sid. Nice to talk to you. Yes, Rosie. Thank you so much.